We're going to look at Matthew chapter 16. This is a very famous passage used by Catholic apologists to prove that we can confess our sins to a church leader, and the church leader has the power to forgive sins. They believe that Holy Mother Church, Roman Catholic Church, has the power to forgive sins. That's what they insist. And this is their passage that they're going to use. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 16, and then we'll start at verse 18. Favorite passage, all right? And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Now, remember, the Roman Catholic Church automatically assumes Peter is the first pope. And obviously, this one we can agree. Peter was probably the number one church leader, perhaps. So, this is a church leader. But look what power he has. Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now look at this. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So notice right here that in verses 18 through 19, this is troubling. The church leader has the power of, now this is a phrase you're going to hear, binding and loosing. What does that mean? Binding, in other words, you have the power to bind a person's sin. So that person's sin is bound and retained, and he goes to hell. That's why the Catholic canons, they had an anathema creed, where, you know, this person will be damned, this person is a curse, this person is a curse, this person is a curse. And the reason why they say that is because the church has that kind of power. Because verse 18, it's given to the church. But not only that, the church leader, Peter... Not only can you bind, but you can loose. So you can loose certain sins. That's why there's the power to forgive sins by church leaders today. And church leaders have that power, they're going to argue. So confession is biblical. Now look at chapter 18. Chapter 18. We're going to look at chapter 18. And we're going to read verse 15. Chapter 18. And we will read verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And notice right here, verse 18, it's repeated. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So you see right here that in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18, it's repeated again. Not only that, we see that at the book of John as well. So, in John, which I'm not going to be looking that up, but you can look it up later. But in the book of John, I believe it's chapter 20, the Catholic apologists will use this verse as well. And the famous verse, which is obvious, is James chapter 5, verse 16. Our King James Bible specifically said, confess your faults, not sins. But the Catholic Church, see, this is proof that your NIV, that your modern ver version, support Catholic doctrine. I don't care who you say, Mr. Dan Wallace and Mr. James White. I don't care what you say, John Ankerberg. These Catholic apologists use James 5 to prove confession of sins. So don't justify it Go blah, 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 with your Greek and Hebrew, okay? Don't do that. Catholic apologists do use that. Now, let's, we're going to include James 5 with that one too. Let's assume, let's go with the critics, James 5 is talking about sins, not faults. Let's just do that, all right? So in th those four verses, we're going to explain how to debunk it, this binding and loosing. First of all, go to Matthew chapter 16. Now, we read verse 18 and 19, right? But is it? But look who it includes. It mentions Peter, but what else is mentioned at verse 18? The church, right? The church. Now, Catholic apologists, they'll say Holy Mother Church has the power to forgive sins. That's wordplay. What they're fooling you to think automatically is that priests, popes, church leaders have the power to forgive sins. That's what they're thinking. But when they say church has the power to forgive sins, that's a dead giveaway. That means every single saved Christian who is part of the church, they have the power to forgive sins. See that? That's why it makes sense that the book of Revelation 1, we're all priests, kings and priests. Not just 
the Roman Catholic priest over there at the confessional. So that's... But here's another thing. Look at verse 20. Then charged he his who? Disciples, see? He's speaking to a group. But if you don't believe that, go to chapter 18. We read verse 18, right? If you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. You loose on earth, shall be loose in heaven. Sins bound and sins loosed, right? But look who it is, verse 15. Moreover, if thy what? Brother shall trespass against thee. So let's take an assumption right here. Let's take an assumption that brother Emilio right here, that I as a fellow brother in Christ trespassed against brother Emilio. Look what happens. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So then it's only between us because that's a personal wrong that I did against him. But look what happens if this doesn't work. Verse 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, then the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Now it's two or three Christians. But see, this proves that every single Christian has a power, has a power of forgiveness of sins. That's why if I wrong Brother Emilio, what's he going to do? He's going to say, I forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ. And then if I don't listen to him, then he's going to take two or three more because we all have the power. But look at verse 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the who? Church, everybody, everybody has that power. Let's assume that, uh, God forbid, but your pastor right here committed adultery to the whole church. All right? And then what's it, what's, what am I accountable to? To everybody at the church. So everybody in the church has that power to forgive me and all that one. But if he neglect to hear the church, look at this. Let him be unto thee as an heathen man as, and a publican. See that? You're going to treat him not like your fellow brother. He's an outcast from your church. That's why verse 18 says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. See that? He's not forgiven. His sins retained. He's treated as a heathen. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You forgive him of his sins. So he's, he remains in the church. Look at that. So that makes sense because look at 2 Corinthians 2. Didn't you know that? You have the power to forgive sins. Didn't you know that? You have the power to forgive sins. You're doing it in the stead of Jesus Christ. You're doing it in the stead of Jesus Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we'll read verse 10. Notice what Paul says with this particular person who sinned against the church. And when he sinned against the church, Paul recognized that he can be forgiven. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we'll read verse 10. We also read Matthew 16 and 18 and chapter 18 and then verses 18 and onwards. I should do that with this one too. We read that this proves it's every Christian. Now look at this now. Look how the scriptures interpret itself. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. To whom ye forgive anything, Look at that, I forgive also. See, everyone forgives, because we're all synced together. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in what? The person of Christ. You know why? We're all the body of Christ. So whoever Christ forgives, we forgive. If there's a brother who forgives, we all forgive. We're all synced as a church. A church is the body of Jesus Christ. See, it makes sense now. Everything's making sense. Now look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, verse 30. We're forgiving people. Why? Because we're doing it for Christ's sake. See that? Like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We're following that example. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 30 through 32. I mean, the scriptures... Give you all the answer. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and the evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Let's assume these Christians committed the sins of verse 30 and 31. What should you do? You should do verse 32. And be kind one to another, tender, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake. Had forgiven you. See that? Now, we're going to look 
at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we'll look at verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. So the sins of a Christian, we see right here, that it, it can be forgiven or retained. So let's put Christians right here. They have the power. And remember, it's all Christians. All Christians have the power to do this. And we saw this with fellow Christians. Fellow Christians. Let's assume that the fellow Christian sin is retained. Does that mean that that Christian is going to hell? No. That, sins, that sin of a Christian is not going to burn in hell. It's going to be exposed at the judgment seat of Christ. Look at 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Look at that. So notice right there that it's going to be retained. Now let's bring up this assumption. Let's bring up this assumption that a fellow Christian does not forgive you. Does that mean your sin is retained when you seek forgiveness from him? Absolutely not. The reason why is because his sin is retained now. You know why? Because his job is to forgive you in Christ's stead. He's doing it for Christ's stead. So if he fails to do that, then some other Christian or Jesus Christ is going to do that for him. Because why? We're all as a church, Jesus Christ, sink together for giving that person. Now, we see seen how a Christian has the power to bind and loose sins with fellow safe Christians. How does that work now with lost people? Ooh. Ooh. So if you have a Catholic friend or family member or a Catholic person that you know of, you're actually their priest. <laughs> that they should confess to pretty much. So if they get mad at you or they persecute you and stuff like that, they better watch out, man. Look at the book of, I'm not kidding you, look at Acts 13. You think I'm, you think that I'm exaggerating? No, look at Acts 13, Acts 13. Some of you folks online better be careful when you attack our church and our ministry, man. I'm telling you good advice. I'm giving you good advice, all right? You don't want God to hang heavy over your head. In Acts chapter 38, uh, 13, verse 38 through 41. Now let's talk about lost people. So Christians binding sins and loosing sins, forgiving and retaining sins of lost people. How does that operate? Acts 13, verse 38 through 41. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you. Paul is preaching to them what? The forgiveness of sins. He's offering that to them. So that's how you forgive the sins of lost people, is when you give them that forgiveness of sins by the gospel. Keep reading. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Look at that. See that? So their sins are cleared. But keep reading right here. We're going to look at verse 30, uh, verse 40. Beware, therefore, look at that. See, he's giving a warning. If you reject this forgiveness, there's going to be a binding, retaining of sins. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. See that? It's going to come upon you, your sin. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. Look at that. They perish in their sin. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. See that? Their sin is retained. When you offer them the gospel and they reject that, you're retaining their sin. Their sins are retained. Look at that, man. All right, now let's keep reading. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians 5, and we'll look at verse 18, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Oh, we have the power? Yeah, we do. Look at this, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20. We have the power to give them that forgiveness of sins. It's not just praise. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Right? He reconciled us from our sins. But look, this ministry of reconciliation is given to you and me by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
to wit that God was in Christ. See, what is this ministry of reconciliation of sins he gave to us? It's the gospel. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. See that? It's the gospel. But look at verse 20. This is even more convincing. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. See that? We're representing for Jesus Christ. See, we're in his stead. As though God did beseech you by us. See that? God is beseeching them to receive the forgiveness through us. We pray you, what? In Christ said. We're doing it in Christ said. Be reconciled to God. Get saved. That book is amazing. It gives you all the answers right there. That book is amazing. But look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Look at this. Their sins are retained when they reject Jesus Christ for their salvation. There's absolutely no doubt. Their sins are retained when they reject Jesus Christ for salvation. John chapter 8, and we'll look at verse 24. John chapter 8, and we'll look at verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. Look at that. Their sins are retained. Why? Because they reject Jesus Christ for salvation. For if ye believe not that I am he, boom, ye shall die in your sins. There's the power of binding and loosing sin. See that? For Christians, it's with fellow Christians, fellow believers. And you're supposed to do that. If you don't do your job, then some other Christian or Jesus Christ will do it. Because we're all function as one together. We're the church. The church is Jesus Christ's body. And uh, if your sins are not forgiven but retained, boom, you get judged for that, the judgment seat of Christ. With lost people, it's the gospel. If they reject that, it's hellfire. And God retained it, and he'll judge them at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, great white throne of judgment. That's why it makes sense you're the jury who will help in the condemnation of that lost sinner. But it also makes me wonder if you'll also be included at the judgment seat of Christ as a jury with a fellow believer. That's why I, I don't know. One thing I've noticed about Bible-believing churches, I have to say this. This is The Lord gave me a little sermon right here. You can't hold bitterness against anybody in the church. That is wrong. What you need to do is you need to forgive that brother and sister in Jesus Christ. We're not a church that's a hate group. We believe in loving one another, and even if you don't want to, if they seek your forgiveness, you better forgive them in the name of Jesus Christ. That is your job, because we are to love one another. That's our job. We are to do that. And if you don't seek that kind of forgiveness and you wrong some brother and you better, you Christians, I, I should preach a sermon on this on Sunday. If there is somebody you wronged in the church that you should take careful look on, if you fail to seek forgiveness and you wrong that person, you know what's going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ? And who knows, God will call them out as a jury. 